All right, it's time to enter the sting zone with the mud dabber. On three, one, two, three. That's it. Yeah. It's like stuck. It's stuck in. Rolling. Mm -hmm. All right. Just spotted a new wasp. New wasp on mine. Let's go see if we can catch it. Yes, got it. Okay, let's go, let's go. Oh yeah, okay, we got it. Awesome. All right, let's see if I can. Looks like some kind of mud dabber. There it is. Ah, look at that guys, we got it. That was awesome. This is what is known as a mud dabber wasp. They're called that because they make a mud nest. And they're usually solitary, we see them out. You, you don't usually see a swarm of a mud dabber wasp. They're also called a thread-bodied wasp. You see that thread-like bridge between their abdomen and the main body? That is a distinct characteristic of these wasps. And they can use all kinds of things to build their nests. They can use sand, mud, anything that they can use to build into that tunnel. In fact, you know what? Why don't I show you what a nest looks like? Hold the phone, I know where one is. I'm gonna bring it to the set. One second. Here we go. So, no, this is not what the wasp makes. This is a plastic container that's just outside of the uh, reserve that we're staying at. But if you get your camera in tight, see that little tunnel of mud? That is the nest of a mud dabber. See if anybody's home. Oh yeah, somebody's definitely home. That one took off. I hope you saw that. Good thing we already caught one because that wasp took off. Let's go back to the wasp that we caught. I'm glad that we found this one because we have been getting a lot of questions. These wasps are found all over the world and there are hundreds, no, check that, thousands of different species of these thread-bodied wasps. And people wanna know, can they sting? They're not aggressive. People rarely get stung by mud dabbers, but I am curious, can the mud dabber sting how bad does it hurt? I think it's time to put this wasp on the bite sting index. Let's set up the table. All right, just like that, we have another insect to add to the bite sting index. I've already been stung three times on this trip. So far, I have the trap jaw ant, the bullet ant, the warrior wasp, and now I'm about to add the mud dabber and the reason why I'm going back and I'm doing all these stings here in Costa Rica, where I have experienced stings before, is because we have this brand new bite sting index. Why reinvent the sting index? Well, a couple reasons. First reason is bites. The original sting index did not include bites. The bites of arachnids, the bites of insects, and other creepy crawlies that we like to experiment to describe the pain and a lot of the educational facts about these creatures. The other thing is pain in itself is not the only factor when it comes to stings. There are other really important considerations like intimidation, which is one of our factors. Intimidation of an animal absolutely changes how you feel about the pain of the sting itself. And then of course we have the pain, and then at the end we have the aftermath. What happens to you after you're stung or bitten by some of these insects is oftentimes the worst part of it. So we wanted to make sure that we encapsulated the full experience of these bite and stings. And then we take all of those scores, average them out to a ranking on the BSI for every creature that we test. And I think it's time to get a closer look at this wasp. Let's get it out of the container. You guys ready? Let's keep the uh, net close by, just, just in case we get an escape artist here. All right. Go for a grab. Not a grab, not a great grab. Gonna have to redo this grab. Oh, I see the stinger already. Oh boy. This might not be good. This might be a... Uh... All right, hang on, I gotta Let's see if I can use this cord piece. I know they can, because it has that threaded abdomen, that threaded waist, it can really swing itself around. Make sure I have a good grip, okay, good grip, good grip. I think we can put the net away. Put that to the side, off the table. Okay, 
getting my first really close look at this insect, this wasp. It is blackish brown in color. Its wings are more of a caramel hue. Has little, a little bit of yellow on the neck. Overall, very stealthy. I would give this a smallish size rating. Like, it's, on, it's definitely sub-medium size for wasp. Not the smallest wasp, but like, not quite a medium wasp. Uh, intimidation factor is gonna be tough on the score for this one, I'm not gonna lie. Like the intimidation factor of this wasp, just knowing what I know about mud dabbers and you know the fact that they're usually docile. These are not wasps that are going to antagonize you. They're not gonna disturb you at lunch. They're just gonna fly through and be on their way back, either back to their nest or out to hunt. A lot of these wasps do prey on spiders. So they are, they can be a type of spider wasp, but they also eat nectar and other forms of sugar. Let's see if it's very, Oh yeah, yeah, it wants to bite. It definitely wants to bite and sting. Getting it in the forceps, I definitely already saw it does have a stinger. I can confirm this is a stinging wasp. See that stinger fishing around? Oh, he looks angry. And it's not a he, it's a she. Only female wasps can sting. And that's a good point, actually, Andrew, is that these stingers are modified egg-laying appendages, but they are connected to a venom sac that I can confirm that this one definitely has because male Wasps do not have stingers. All right, let's see this thing, guys. Here we go. I'm gonna go right here. Are right, you guys ready? Okay. Here we go. All right. It's time to enter the sting zone with the mud dabber. I'm getting a little nervous now. I'm not gonna lie. Not many people get stung by these, and I've never been stung by one before. So here we go. Here goes nothing. On three. One. Two. There's singers out. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Got got a sting. Oh, it's still in. It's still in. You see it? Ah. Ah. You see that stinger? Oh, it's like stuck. It's stuck in. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. Ah. Okay. I'm definitely feeling something. Oh yeah. It's heating up. It's heating up. Let me put the wasp back. Okay. Here we go. Good. Great. Great. All right. Get some swelling going. Scrap the pain mark. Hot. Local. And not that bad. I'll be honest with you guys. This is, uh, this could get worse. Mild to intermediate sting. Not gonna get a great score there, but let's see what this does over the next 24 hours. You don't have to wait. We're gonna skip ahead and show you a quick montage of the aftermath and then give you an official BSI rating for the Costa Rican mud dabber. For intimidation, the mud dabber looks like a menacing wasp, but it is slender and somewhat smaller than most wasps you typically see. But because it is a wasp, you have to assume that it's not going to be any fun to take a sting from. So for that, I give it a 3.5 out of 10. On pain factor, honestly, it's not that bad. And it's actually hard to think of a less painful sting I've ever taken. As soon as the pain started to build, it abruptly ended almost in an instant, which is very uncommon for any species of flying wasp. So on the pain scale, I'm only gonna give it a two out of 10. Last but not least, the aftermath, which was a much more typical wasp sting reaction. The swelling and itching was mild, but it lasted for around three days. And honestly, once again, not nearly as bad as any other wasp I've ever been stung by. So for that, it only gets a 2.5 out of 10, giving the Costa Rican mud dabber an average BSI score of only a 2.7, which is the lowest I have given to any species since starting the BSI. Needless to say, this is one insect that you really don't need to worry about. If you enjoyed that episode, Make sure to search for the Brave Wilderness channel on YouTube so you can join me and the crew on our upcoming adventures.